One of the most common questions we at Evoke Endurance get from athletes, whether we're coaching them or just you know via our forum and emails and whatnot, um, involves the, how to interpret the heart rate drift test. Um, <clears throat> the article that accompanies this video gives a more detailed explanation of how to conduct the test, why we do it, um, what its history is, and that sort of thing. Uh, this little video, I'm just going to analyze four different tests um, to demonstrate you know, how you do this. Um, we've got four different examples that I think will help you. Uh, three of them are indoors on a treadmill, and the last one will be outdoors. So this first one that we're looking at right here, um, this is clearly a treadmill. You can see because it, the, the start and finish point here that my little cursor is circling indicates it was done on a, what didn't move. So that means that it stayed in the person stayed in the same place. So if we look at this, you can see them dragging the cursor here down at the bottom. This uh, red line represents the heart rate. So if we select by dragging the cursor, click and then drag the cursor for the first 30 minutes of this test, and we look over here under selection, we can see there's roughly 30 minutes and the average heart rate is 144. If we do the same thing for the second half of the test, select the second half, you notice over here on the in this upper right hand corner that this is also roughly 30 minutes. The average is 151. Um, quick arithmetic, and uh, I know this is not the way you normally would calculate percentage, but it's so close to giving the same answer. Um, and it's so much easier that this is the way I would recommend doing it. Just take the um, make 151 the numerator and 144 the denominator in this case. And when you divide 151 by 144, you will get right about 4.8%, just under 5%. So this would indicate a very well done test and a number that we could use. And if we look here, the starting heart rate, we can see my cursor over here on the left, moving around, it's right around 140. So for this person, we would set the top of zone two at 140. Okay, the next test here. Um, this test came out with quite a low number. And then the way we do this one is we would start here once the, looks like the warm up was till roughly 10 minutes, the heart rate begins to stabilize there at around 130. So we're gonna select 30 minutes. So come up here to around, 40, then you can see in for this selection, that's roughly 30 minutes long, average heart rate of 137. And if we select the second half and we only go out to here to where uh, it begins to trail off, um, see that's only 24 minutes, but it's close enough for what we're doing. Remember, this isn't, um, we're not looking for perfection here, but if we divide that um, we're going to get just, just over like, you know, one and a half to 2% range. Mm -hmm. So this test would, end, it was probably a little bit low. The starting heart rate was probably a tiny bit low. So, you know, this person would might want to redo this test starting at around 135. We'd probably see slightly bigger drift, a, a drift that would be closer to 5%. And, um, we would then, if that were the case, we'd then use that, um, 135 as as the top of the zone, of zone two, the aerobic threshold. <clears throat> now you can either redo the test or you can just kind of guesstimate uh, rather than if you don't want to go through the test again. But um, you you know remember that you know we're dealing with the human body here. It's going to change from day to day, and we're not looking for accuracy out to the second decimal place or anything like that. So let me go to the third test. Um, this is a test where the drift was a bit high. So we come out here and we start looking for a place where the heart rate begins to stabilize. And you can see somewhere in here, it's hanging around 140. Um, so we'll start here at about 10 minutes into the test and make a uh, select a rough here. I, I just dragged the cursor to what looks to me by eyeballing it about halfway along there. Um, you can see that the average of this first half is 147, and the average of the second half is uh, 158. And if we do, again, that same arithmetic, we divide 158 by 147, we come up with about 7.5% drift. So this person, the starting heart rate overshot. 
So this 140 that they were probably targeting to start this is a bit high. So this person might want to, again, either redo the test at about 135 or just say, okay, it's probably close to 135, the aerobic threshold, and set that as the top of zone two. Now, the last test I want to look at is one that was done outdoors. Um, <clears throat> This one, these are a little bit easier to analyze because Training Peaks kind of does that for us. And you'll notice here, this is a bunch of warm up. Um, and then really, the heart rate begins to kind of stabilize somewhere in this vicinity of around 20 minutes into the test. So I wouldn't want to see the warm up as part of the test. So we'll just select this from, from the end of the warm up out here to, to there. You can see it's right about an hour. And um, the heart rate drift, you can see over here, uh, Training Peaks calculates that for us at 4.23 in this case. Um, and the reason we can use this, it looks like this guy was going up and downhill a lot. But if you notice here um, in this selection that I've chosen here, the total elevation gain and loss over here in the upper right corner where my cursor is moving, that is very little. Um, for an hour, eight miles, the elevate, total elevation gain and loss was only you know, somewhere in 34 to 68 feet. So pretty flat course. So this was a good test. And you can see it was um, just under 5%. So we would go back and look at what's the starting heart rate here for him. It's very close to, you know, a high 160s to 170. So in this case, um, we would just call this at about uh, the, the top of zone two for this athlete's 170. Um, and so this is the difference between the outdoor test and the indoor test. Now, the, the big thing to keep in mind here, the outdoor test needs to be flat. It can't be an out and back because almost inevitably when you run out and back, you will be going uphill one direction and downhill the other. And that will definitely change the pace to heart rate ratio that um, the GPS will calculate. And the other, the main thing to keep in mind when you're doing a treadmill test is once you establish a steady state heart rate and speed on your treadmill, don't touch either the gradient or the uh, the speed of the treadmill. We're looking to hold those things constant and then watch what happens to the, the heart rate during that. So I hope that's been helpful. Um, you can always reach out to us via the forum. We answer these questions almost every day. Uh, you can email us at coach at Evoke Endurance, um, and we'll be happy to help you with these tests. But there's plenty of people on our forum who have a lot of experience with doing these tests themselves. One of the reasons we like this test as compared to um, an expensive gas exchange test at a laboratory is that when you see performance gains during your training, you can just redo this test anytime you want. Preferably do it on the same terrain or on the same treadmill that you used before, and you'll just up the, the heart rate a little bit um, to, to, to ascertain a new top of zone two. But it's, it's cheap um, and easy to, once you get this test figured out, it's quite easy to administer. Um, hope this really helps people. Thanks for tuning in.